You made it past my traps? Uh, I mean, get out of here, mister. Aren't you afraid the ghost will get you? No, I mean it, mister. The ghost will melt your brain to mush. You need to get out of here, and fast. So what if it was? I bagged meaner than you, and I'll do it again. Well, all right. But any funny business, and I'll pop you on. My name's Kenny, and I'm the boss of this mine. Did you know I once bagged a mire alert ten feet tall? I don't know. I ran away a long time ago. I live here all by myself. I wasn't born right. Mama hid me in the basement, and Pappy kind of just forgot about me. But I knew I had to go before I grew up. Look at me! I don't get the marks! I go around the wets and folk will shoot at me, thinking I was one of your type. I already told you I ran away. Shut up about it, all right? I got bored locked up in the basement all the time. So I started taking things apart and putting them back together again. Things aren't so strange when you can see all the stuff that makes them. You know, see something's insides? That's what the real thing is. I'm grown up enough already, and I'm the only thing I can be. Me. The grown-ups like my mom and pop just live in the wet. They're okay. They just don't trust outsiders like you. Most think I'm an outsider, too, because I don't got the markings on me. I tend to stay away from the grown-ups. Except when they have a campfire. Some nights I hear them dancing. Then I sneak out to watch. Anybody ever say you talk too much? Hmm, I don't know, mister. You didn't try to kill me, and you seem pretty nice for a grown-up. But still, how do I know I can trust you? I used to have Kenny Bear around, but he fell down the big shaft back there. It's too scary for me to go get him. Maybe you can, though. I don't go back there much. It's real dark, and there's lots of critters. You should be fine, though. Gee, thanks. I dropped him near the shaft, so he's probably at the bottom. Old Man Herzog's mine hole isn't much, but it's home. He was a mean old man, owned this mine a million years ago, made the miners work real hard, and didn't give them any money or food for their kid. One day, a bunch of miners sat down and just stopped working. Old man Herzog, he didn't like that. Not a bit. So he blew them all up with a million, million tons of dynamite. No one wanted to work on the mine after that. Then old Herzog came down here and hung himself. They say his angry ghost still haunts the mine. That doesn't scare me, though. Swamp folk know old Herzog's mine hole say it's haunted. So I knew most folk wouldn't want it this way, except outsiders like you. Doesn't usually take more than a clapper jaw and a leg to scare them off. I go out to play some days, and might bag me a shell man to eat. Most days, I just sit here with my stories and toys, though. Anybody ever say you talk too much? Sure, see ya.
Did you want something? Kenny Bear! You're the greatest! So hey, you can use this place as your hideout if you want. Hide from the folk out there, stash your stuff, okay? You're welcome. So, uh, what do you want to do now? You want to play a game? Like hide and seek or tag or something? See ya, mister!
You are welcome to our tribe. Truly, the Mother Panga has bestowed her wisdom upon you, and your mind has been expanded. That is merely the sensation of your consciousness rushing to embrace its true potential. It is the feeling of having no boundaries, no limits. Yea, though your body will bear the scars of the ritual, your soul shall be forever strengthened by the experience. You are now welcome in our cathedral. Enter, enlightened brother. We espouse the expansion of the perfect mind and the rejection of the corrupt physical. The material world is destroyed and imperfect. We seek to release our minds from their tainted cages so as to find a better world. Leader? That would be Jackson, a man of great wisdom. He has withdrawn to his cavern of communion, the better to contemplate the unknowable. Only the righteous are trusted to know where this nexus of understanding lies. And alas, I am not so blessed. Alas, only the worthy may enter his nexus of meditation. He has not seen fit to enlighten me. Our most enlightened one divined that the fates themselves did decree the mansion must be burnt to the ground. It is a gift from the earth itself, in acknowledgement of our perfect balance with nature and the higher planes. She recognizes that we seek to leave behind the corrupt physical, and she nurtures us in our quest. May you find your way. You are new, and you are welcome. I am Croatoa. I am not so new. Not here. We dream. Dream of a better world, not falling apart like ours. And when we find a dream that makes us forget this world, we dream that we do not have to wake up. Look to Jackson. He is the one who knows. But do not strain to see him here. Jackson is away. That hill is holy. It must be cleared. Jackson told us this. Some went to fight. I stayed with Ponga. Ponga does not fight. Ponga grows where it can. Ponga knows what is important. Ponga grows strong. I help Ponga grow stronger. Ponga understands me. I understand Ponga. That is all it needs to be. It feels good to work with dirt, doesn't it? Some people call it work, but they don't understand. Take my shovel. It has seen much use and much dirt. Maybe it will help you. But be careful not to cut yourself with it. It can make you sick. Be well. Pardon me while I... Pardon me while I commune with the higher planes. Pardon me while I commune with the higher planes. Be at peace. Escape to mine and you as well.
mind at peace. Looks like another newbie in the tribe and still able to string together whole sentences. Ain't you the lucky one? You still remember your name? Math? How's your memory? When I came back, there were bits in my memory where all I could recall was a white light and a jumble of voices. Crazy, huh? But you're not drooling, so you're doing okay. The rest weren't so lucky when they got their heads cut open. You sure you're feeling okay in there? You might want to check your head for a scar. We all get them after going to that bog. You know, the last part of the ritual. After you pass out, they get a guy to bring you back, cut open your skull, and free your mind. As in, he rips out a bit of your brain. It's supposed to be the part that holds you back, but that doesn't always work out so good. Anyway, you look like a lively one, so welcome to the tribe. My name's Nadine. Look, it's not that I don't want to go home or anything. I mean, I love my ma, even if she does make me want to claw my eyes out sometimes. It's just, I came out here to find a fortune, to make my mark, to be able to bring something with me when I do come back. If you see my mom again, let her know I'll be coming back eventually, just not quite yet. Yeah, it's all a little fuzzy for me, but I've got a hunch. I'm going to go do some snooping, see what I can figure out. Meet me by the riverboat in a day or so, and maybe I'll have something for you. Off at his magical thinking cave, I guess. We're not allowed to know where it is. He says we're not enlightened enough to understand. I swear that sort of stuff pisses me off so much. I thought joining would be all drugs and magic, but it's just the same crap as everywhere else. Guess that's why I trailed Jackson to his stupid mystery cave. I only been here a week or so, but I'm about ready to ditch this bunch of dummies. I already stole all the punga I could ever need. Hey, if you still want to know where Jackson's hiding, I can help you out. No reason for me to give a damn about this place, you know? His cave's under the cathedral, but it's hard to find. Use this key to get in through a wrecked ship down at the sea cliffs to the east. What is this, a date? You start making a move and it's stabbing time. What? There's not much to say. I ran off from home to see the world and find a fortune. And I'm doing it now, okay? Well, there's not much to say. I ran off from home to see the world and find a fortune. And I'm doing it now, okay? Whoa, whoa, whoa! That was all Jackson's crazy idea. I knew better than to volunteer for that suicide mission. Last time I wandered too close to that mansion, some old ghoul sicked his dogs on me. Screw that. Yeah, enough, Gavin. Let's move. Mind at ease.
long struggle will finally end the only way it could have, with me as the victor! You simpleton! Psychic domination! And that still won't be possible until you destroy Desmond's jamming device! No need to worry, Titan One. We shall reconsecrate the mansion and remove the impurities disrupting your perfect guidance. Yes, fine! Go destroy the house and its impurities! Just stop that jammer and I'll be free of you morons once and for all! Hello? You are... a fellow seeker of the higher planes, perhaps? What brings you here? What splendid news! At last, the Holy Land is empty of his disruptive aura, and the astral plane is open to us all. Oh, but the Transcendent Master will want to hear of this, and as the returning champion, it is your right and honor to tell him yourself. After all, it is he who makes all true decisions about the spiritual growth of our tribe, including the decision to cleanse the mansion. Would that I was so wise. No, true leadership of the tribe belongs to the higher mind of the Enlightened One. Although his mind has moved beyond the need for flesh, his consciousness still returns here to guide our people. I merely interpret his wishes. He manifests here, high on a ledge in the great sea cave's well. Perhaps, if you are fortunate, he will choose to share his wisdom with you. We are a family of dreamers, a band of astral explorers, and a church of the mind. In time, we will be free of the horrors of the base physical world. We will play amongst the pure thoughts of the universe. I know it may seem that I am a brave shepherd to my flock, but the truth is far more humble. I am nothing more than the largest fish in our school, as we swim through the astral seas, exploring, learning, and becoming one. But we are not swimming aimlessly, no. We have a beacon. The Shining Mind speaks to me in my meditations and guides us always. We take no pleasure in violence. Our goal was merely to remove the ghoul. His presence is an offense to the Transcendent Master's astral dominion. I cannot claim to understand the exact reasons that the mansion's resident caused such disruption, however. To understand fully, Ask the master. Yes, commune with him while I see to my tribe. There is much to be done. Yes, fellow seeker? Yes. So you're the mouse that was scurrying around here? Not much to look at, but at least you're not drooling all over yourself. I can work with that. Now then, perhaps you can be more useful than that simpering spiritualist and his tribe of idiots. Jackson believes me to be some kind of god. You'd think that would be good, but his interpretations of my commands leave something to be desired. Regardless, I trust you can be more effective than he has been. I need your help on an important task. There's a troublesome ghoul who lives in Calvert Mansion. I need him destroyed and his jamming device neutralized immediately. More than you could possibly imagine with your squishy pink mind. But the only pressing matter at the moment is a device in his possession. He has a jammer that limits my projection range to this pathetic cave. Remove that, and I can extend my reach so much further. Killing Desmond would be a nice plus, but I'm sure we can get around to that later. Desmond! That bag of bones and bile will pay dearly for his trespasses. 
Were it not for his interference, I would still have a body. Still, its absence is only honed by brilliance, so perhaps I owe him my thanks. An appreciation I'll show in the form of a quick and messy death. <laughs> of course I did, but that moron thought it was one of his adult visions. The real goal was to destroy the ghoul's jamming device. Honestly, those fools aren't worth the meat they're made of. A minion that can't follow directions is no use at all. Yes, away with you! <laughs>